Welcome to Sanford Underground Research Facility and thank you for joining us for Neutrino Day. My name is Julie and I'll be your tour guide today. We're going to visit the hoist room which is behind us, that brick building that you can see, and it's going to answer one of the questions that we receive frequently which is how exactly do you get underground anyway? We're about to see the machines and the mystery that make that happen. You can see the head frame in front of you. We have two of them. If you zoom around enough, you can actually see there's one behind you too. These head frames cover the entrance to our underground. The head frame itself is about 150 feet high and it stands over a shaft that goes down about 5,000 feet below ground. If you look carefully from the brick building, you will see that there are four sets of rope that go to the top of that building. At the top of each head frame, we have some very large sheave wheels that act as pulleys. And that rope goes over the top of the pulley from the hoist and the cage, kind of your personal elevator, for your trip underground is attached to the other end. We'll be able to see a section of that rope up close in a minute. Before we start our tour today, we want to make sure that we have our personal protective equipment. We call that PPE. One of the first things that you're going to need are your safety glasses. You're also going to be required to wear a hard hat for the duration of your tour. Now that we have all of our protective equipment, we need to do one more thing, and we need to make sure that we can keep track of who is working underground. The way that we do that is that we use a brass tag system. Every person who works here has a tag with their name on it. When you have all of your equipment and you're ready for your cage ride, you take your brass tag and you place it on the board. Now our ride is going to be here at the south cage. You'll notice though that we have four doors. And when we get to the hoist room, you'll also see that they're controlled by four ropes. Now the south cage is what we would take underground. Its partner, the north cage, is a working compartment and they're tied together. When one side is all the way down, the other side is all the way up. And that counterbalance helps the hoist move a really long distance. You'll also notice that we have a north skip and a south skip that work the very same way. When one is all the way down, the other one is all the way up. Our next stop will be in the hoist room. Right now we're underground walking through a utility tunnel that connects the head frame where we saw those four yellow doors to the hoist room. Welcome to the Yates Hoist Room. I would like you to take just a few minutes and look around at everything that you can see in this room and I'm going to send you on a bit of a virtual scavenger hunt. I would like you to move around on your screen and see if you can find a clue that will tell you when this was installed. Now if you were careful and you looked in just the right place, you might have noticed this nameplate. You'll notice that this has a date of 1939. And while that might seem like it was an incredibly long time ago, this is still a very important piece of machinery. And I want you to imagine in 1939, how much engineering they needed to take into account to make this system work. It still works the way it does today and we've changed very little. They did such a great job. Now, one of the things that you may be curious about is the rope itself. If you look carefully at the rope, you will actually see that it is bundles of steel on the exterior, and on the interior is a very well-greased hemp-style rope. That allowed this to, as it's flexed, and I wish I was strong enough to show you how, but I'm not. As it flexed, it lubricated itself from the inside out. That was one of their design features. But what I think is even more fantastic is that they designed each of these hoists to hold approximately 6,000 feet of rope. If you can look closely at this drum, you will notice that there are grooves cut on that drum, which means they eliminated almost all of the friction from rope rubbing on each other. As those drums wind up, 
each section of rope lays right next to each other. It never crosses over another piece of rope. And that's important when the rope is one of the things that's carrying you to and from work every day. Okay, now this is where I want you to put on your thinking cap. So you'll notice that this rope is leaving the building. Now, if your cage was attached to the other side, would you be coming up or would you be going down? Now, I knew you'd give that some good thought. And we all know that as this rope leaves the building, that it goes over the sheave wheel at the head frame. So as this rope is unwound, it's getting longer, it goes over the sheave wheel and the cage is going down. Now, you might also notice that you can see its companion rope above it. As this rope leaves the building, the other side is coming in. Do you remember our counterbalance? Okay, now I would like you to see where the ropes go once they leave the hoist room. As we walk across towards the head frame, you'll notice that we have a structure that stands 150 feet tall. At the top of this structure, you'll notice that there are four slits that are cut to keep those ropes from crossing over each other. As they go over the sheave wheel, they come down, they're attached to the top of the cage. And then that is the beginning of the journey from the surface to the underground. This is going to be the last stop on our tour, but I wanna thank you for joining us for Neutrino Day, and we hope to see you again soon.